Welcome back to Focus. And I know we look a little strange here sitting in this room, but we are Focus. And this is, I'm Pearl Alley. And, and I'm Cindy McKee, and um, I'm the past host of Focus. And um, Pearl was too. And <laughs> we're happy to say that since Focus Through Bright House is no longer, we are here to bring you Focus on Brevard that you can watch online at uh, brevardbuzztv.com. And we'd like to thank some of the people that helped us along the way with the other focus. We're not on Bright House anymore. We're, like she said, we're on Buzz TV. And so you can find us online and you can find us on Facebook and a lot of other places too. But we'd like to thank Senior Scene Magazine and Senior, Senior Life Newspaper. Newspaper. We've, we right. were both in there. Uh, it showed what the shows were and everything. And we really enjoyed that show for quite a few years. And it's, it was on, what, 40 years, 40 Cindy? 40 years it was in existence, yes. And um, Elaine McGavern, the last uh, producer, did it for at least 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, I know I was on it, I think, nine years, I figured. I started in the graphic the graphics end of it and then uh, well once you left for a little while then I became the host and then you came back and we shared yeah. that. So. Yeah that was fun. Yeah yeah. And we mostly have art and we're gonna have art and we're gonna have some authors, authors on this time. This right? county is just full of talented people there's going to be so many people to have on the show. And this day we're gonna be interviewing each other. I'd like to find out more about you Cindy. We've always interviewed everybody else but I'd like to find out a little bit okay, more about well. you. After we take a little break, I'll be glad to tell you about what All I've right. been doing lately, and you can tell me what you've been doing. Well, we're both artists, and we've been artists, what, how many years have you been an artist? Mm, kind of as a hobby. I mean, I'm not a serious, serious artist at really? this point. Really? I thought you were. Well, I love it. <laughs> I have passion for it, but, you know, I, I don't make my livelihood from it. It's still a hobby. So, um, you know, probably 12 or 13 years, I guess, I've been started in watercolor. Well, we'll find out a little bit more in a few minutes. All right. This is an important message for anyone who has had breast cancer that required chemotherapy. Have you or a loved one experienced hair loss or baldness that lasted six months or more after chemotherapy treatment for breast cancer? If so, you may be entitled to compensation. Call our helpline today. The failure to adequately warn patients deprive them of the option to choose other chemotherapy options that are just as effective without the risk of permanent baldness. Call today. Please call 800-514-8094. Welcome back to Focus. I'm Pearl Alley, your host, and I'm going to interview another host, Cindy <laughs> McKee. And Cindy, you were talking a little bit about your life and, and art, and you were doing art for how many years, you said? Oh, I probably got interested in watercolor, I think about 13 years ago, I wow. want to say. Wow. Yeah. Now, we've brought in a few pieces of your work to show the audience, and the first one we're going to look at is the hummingbird, and tell us a little bit about that right. one. Right. Well, that one's watercolor. Like I said, that was my first passion, which really got me going in, in art. and. Um, that one's called Sweet Flutterings, and um, and then the other pieces that I brought, you know, from there, from my love of watercolor, I have expanded into silk painting. I love the silks. Now you have to see the silks. The silks are wonderful. Well, we, you, you were at uh, the Arts and Antiques for quite a while too. Art weren't Antique you? Gallery, yeah. yes, for about eight years. I was a member there. And that's in Melbourne. Um, that's in uh, downtown O'Galley in O'Galley, the Egad okay. Art District. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from watercolor, it was just kind of natural to flow into the silks because, you know, you're working on a white piece of silk and the colors kind of meld together and react a mm -hmm. lot like watercolors do. Mm -hmm. So it's a very similar um, uh, medium to be using to, now, to did, work with. You brought a couple pieces like that. Is the, uh, you've got another one here. Do you have a silk one here? Yeah, I've brought two silk pieces. With silk like that, you have to um, use what we call a gouda. It's a resist, and you create enclosed like cells, is what I call them, and then fill that with the color. No, gouda is what? What is gouda? Is gouda. that like a waxy? No, it's more of a latex. Okay. I want to say it's more of a latex okay. substance. You know, it doesn't wash off or come out. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it does form these barriers that you 
can fill with your color and control your color with it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would just go over the entire um, piece. And I, I noticed the sunflowers. Now, those are look like they're a 3D. It That's is. That's gorgeous. The sunflower started out, it is um, a batik on rice paper. And a batik is, you know, using wax and you build it up, you build up your color and your wax in layers. Mm -hmm. Starting, of course, with preserving your, your lightest colors and working up to your darkest. Mm -hmm. And then you take all the wax off of it. And what I did is, and you have to have white behind it because mm -hmm. the rice paper is very thin and you can see through it, it's transparent. So. Now, how do you build it to give it a 3D? Is well, that's just, just it. I took um, a canvas then oh, okay. and, you know, marked out the size of where my batik was going to go and left that white. Mm -hmm. And on the outer edges, then I used acrylics to kind of simulate a background that went with, you know, the rest of the um, sunflower batik. And then to get that 3D effect, I took other forms of rice paper and painted them very wet with my watercolors. And while they were wet, I molded them into well, the shape of leaves. We really enjoyed having you on the show, and that was a fast little yeah, go yeah. to Cindy's page because she's got great art there. <laughs> and we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. It's a fact. Millions of Americans are currently faced with the rising cost of home repair bills. If this is you or someone you know, we have important information that could save you thousands. Affordable home warranty coverage is available that provides protection that costs less and is customized to fit your needs. Call Nation's Home Warranty for a free quote. There's no credit check and everyone is guaranteed approval. The call and consultation are free. Please call 800-514-9164. Welcome back. I'm Pearl Ollie, and tonight we have Cindy McKee in the studio. And Cindy, we're at Wild Manta right now. And tell us a little bit about your your experience with art because right. you've been well, doing like this I for said, a long I time. I started, you know, in watercolor probably about 13 years ago. And when I got active in the art community, um, um, of course, um, that included the Brevard Watercolor Society, which I've been a member of for many, many years, probably since about the beginning, but. Um, in the last year or so, I have become the webmaster for them, which has, you know, opened up all new doors for me. And um, the Brevard Watercolor Society is just a great, um, a great organization in the area. If you have any interest in it, I, um, they really they do promote a lot of artists in there, and a lot of my students that I have also go right. and belong to it and they love it. And well, and not only that, but we offer four times a year workshops, three-day workshops, oh, that's you know, wonderful. offered by um, internationally renowned artists. I mean, and they're huge very shows. accomplished. The shows are wonderful and they always have demos at the shows and everything else. Right, right. We do that once a year, a big member show. It's called Splash. Um, every other month we also have a mini workshop and this is all, you know, that's free. Mm -hmm. you, know, you just show up for it, but it's um it's member conducted. Mm. Um, you know, members agree to come up and you know teach you how to paint something that's white using all these colors, but still oh, it's isn't white. It, you isn't know? it wonderful? Yeah. yeah. Or um, you know how to use shadow and light, or just all the different important techniques that are. Now, used. who's the president of that right now? Um, right now, um, Diane Harmon is the president. Okay. And, um, you know, but we have many people involved, you know, because uh, the, the workshops, the mini workshops, um, just all the different functions that we have. It takes a lot of people to keep it all organized. Oh, yeah. Now, you've been in and out of art. Did you go to college for that, or how did no, you learn no, your pretty, art? No, uh, pretty much on the job training. You know, I, I was a graphic designer mm -hmm. and um, didn't go to college for that, self taught, and like I said, on the job. and. I started in computers very early, so I just kind of grew with the industry. Now, you, when you do your art, they're so, I mean, they're just meticulously painted and drawn. Do you draw this out first, or how do you lay out a painting for yourself? Yes, um, especially in watercolor, because, um, you know, because it is a, 
it has to all be pre-planned because you have to preserve your whites and then work your way up to your darks. So there's no going back and fixing anything. Mm. So yeah, in watercolor, you kind of need to be detailed, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it's very, very, especially this peacock. I'm looking at all these little feathers. Do you hand drew all those little feathers in? Mm -hmm. Oh wow. yeah, on the silk, yes. Wow. Yes. That's on silk. It's got to be very, very hard. Well, it just it took a while because it, because it was intricate. Yeah, material doesn't give its way like it would on on a canvas well, or paper thing, like or something like that. Well, same thing like watercolor. I mean, um, what you put down is what you've got. There's mm. there's no going back. It's not like oils where you can go back over it with another color right. or, or paint it out. There's right. no painting it out. I do do a little bit of lifting though. I do, a, not a little bit, a lot of lifting for my whites. Like if you lose the white, I, I actually have a method I use for lifting the white right. out to get back down to the white, which is kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. But and if you've used a non-staining paint, that, that works real well. But again, pre-planning. Yes. Know? <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the okay, show, Cindy. Pearl. We're going to be right back Good next time. Again. And Cindy's going to be right. the host. <laughs> And I'm going to be the guest, so we'll see you soon. All right, stay tuned. Now that health reform is law, you cannot be denied health insurance coverage, but you can pay too much. As a single mom, I was convinced that we could not afford health insurance until I spoke to the people from ICANN, who told me that I qualified for a special enrollment and a subsidized rate. Now I get so much more for so much less. Call now and get the ICANN mobile app free. So don't wait another minute. Call ICANN, get covered, save money. Welcome back to Focus on Brevard. This time I'm the host, I'm Cindy McKee, and I'm going to be talking with Pearl Ollie. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pearl, I know you, you've been an artist for a long time and you've, you've studied it in college and you're a professional artist. And not, it not embarrasses like a hobbyist me, like me. <laughs> because after looking at your work, who's, you just said you're a hobbyist and your work <laughs> excels over my, oh, I don't I'm think embarrassed so. to say that. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> don't, yeah, no. I'm, I'm for real, you know. It, it's funny because a lot of the students that I have do, you know, I look at their art and I'm like, wow, you've really gone past where I thought you could ever be, you know, yeah. and I, I spent my whole life doing art. And then somebody else will come along and they just start right from but their that's a older age. to you as a teacher well, that your I students pick it up that well. I mean, obviously you're teaching them the right concepts, right? Mm, I think a lot of it, it has to do with the spirit of the person. I think art, and I always tell people that, that everybody can be an artist. And I think that art just oozes out of people and everybody's going to be different and look at some of the most famous artists we have, Jackson Pollock for instance, who has no, you know, that's just splattered paint but yet it's the most expensive art that's out there. Right. So anything can go and when people realize that I think they lighten up on themselves and really be able to, they're able to express themselves a little bit better. Right. And yeah. And they just let it come from within and don't try to compete with anybody. With that they anybody, right. mm -hmm. you know, and that's mm -hmm. the whole beauty of art, mm -hmm. I think. And as an artist and being that all my life and then seeing you and you're saying, oh, I just do this as a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to talk about my art now. Well, so I know. So you <laughs> because teach I, and you I also teach. do some sculpting. I sculpt also. Mm -hmm. uh, I've uh, been sculpting and painting all my life and kind of simultaneously I've worked with. Right ceramics and clay, uh, glass blowing, and just recently, in fact, in Palm Bay, uh, right at the Palm Bay Mall, the Hammock Landing, there's five of my pieces that are there right now, and I just completed a, a, a panther, Florida panther there. Right. Those are all made out of cement, and they're big pieces, uh, and they were part of Pokemon. That was kind of interesting right. as I'm watching these kids as I'm painting them and, and, and doing some repairs on, a, on the pieces that were there uh, from eight years ago. And everybody's with their texting and doing something. They're playing and I thought they were taking pictures of me. I got so excited. Wow, they want a picture of me. <laughs> right. And I finally I said, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> groups of people were around there all playing Pokemon. So right, it had nothing right. to do with me. It was all they were looking at. <laughs> There goes the ego, right, you know? Right, right. Anyways, so that, but I, and I also did um, Ponce de Leon with Raphael Picon. Uh, right. It's a 10-foot bronze statue in, in Ponce de Leon Inlet in Melbourne Beach. 
uh, right near Sebastian. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've been doing some them. book illustrating, I know. Book recently. illustrating right mm -hmm. now. I'm working on a, a book right now okay. for a woman out of Montana. And so I'm doing that and painting. Yeah, so you're a very well rounded painting, artist. Painting, painting. And, uh -huh. <laughs> We're yeah. going to take a short little break okay. here and then come back and talk about your paintings. All right. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. you behind on your mortgage? Is the bank threatening to take your home? Are you considering trying to get a loan modification on your own? Did you know that less than 5% of people who tried on their own actually got a modification? At the Mortgage Modification Helpline, we know the rules and regulations banks don't want you to know about, and we've helped thousands of people stay in their homes. So call the Mortgage Modification Helpline today. Please call 800-514-8640. Hey Pearl, so you've brought some pieces with you. Let's talk a little bit about some of the art you've brought with you. All right. Um, I do all kinds of painting. I work with oil, acrylic, watercolor. Um, I think I like all of them the same. It's hard to pick and people always ask me. But I actually did that one on TV with you that time. Right. With Dorothy Rhines and, and you when we were doing a little demo of our artwork. Mm -hmm. And we all were painting and that one, I brought that one back. I also do portraiture, which I love doing people. That's always been one of my favorite things to do is people. And I brought one, uh, it's titled Charlie, a good friend of mine. Uh -huh. And that's the Charlie painting. So I like to capture and, and people's is that, essence. that one's acrylic? That one is oil. That, that one is oil. an oil. Okay. But I paint like at least two, two paintings a day. And so I've got a lot of paintings. So these are right. just a sampling of and what I do. And that's mostly because you're teaching classes. And right. as you teach, you're demonstrating. And you complete a painting while you're doing that. In two hours, it's yeah. very easy to do a painting. Mm -hmm. And I get, almost everybody in the class gets to that point where we're all working fast. And I'm trying to get people to work fast. Sometimes we draw it out. But most of the time when I paint something, uh, even in watercolor, I have a tendency to just paint what I feel and see right off the bat. I usually start with doing the sky, the backgrounds, and then work my way into it, uh, layering. And it is very hard to try to keep the white in there. So I do use a, a pickup technique that I've kind of been working with for quite a while where I wet the paintbrush and just lift and lift and lift until the white comes back out if I forget about the white. Right, right. And don't use mask or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it just a little technique I learned. and. I've been using that quite a bit, actually. So when you teach, are you teach you teach watercolor mostly, don't you? I teach watercolor, oil, and acrylic. Oh, you do teach all three, mm -hmm. all right. And I do private classes as well. Mm -hmm. And I teach at the uh, Cocoa Beach Library, and I also teach at Merritt Island Library for the last, geez, 14 years. Right. So I've been there for a long so time. So if somebody wanted to take a class from you, they should contact the libraries or? Yeah, just contact the libraries or go online. They have all the uh, different times and everything that I teach on online at the online public, at library the public library libraries, mm -hmm. Brevard mm -hmm. Public right. Library. So yeah, it's a Brevard, sta it's a Brevard uh, right. local station. And do you have your own website? I do. Just you can go to my webpage and see it's pearlolly.com and you'll see a lot of the different art that I do and and uh, you can click on different parts of it and it'll show the sculpting and painting and right. even the class schedules in there. Oh great Pearl and um, keep up the great work and all right and um, we are going to say good night so this is the end of our first um, focus on Brevard. And keep watching because we're gonna have a lot of different artists and authors on here. Attention! This is an important medical alert for anyone who has taken Xarelto or Pradaxa. If you or a loved one took the blood thinner medication Xarelto or Pradaxa and then hospitalized for internal bleeding, call the Sentinel Group today. You may be entitled to significant compensation. Xarelto and Pradaxa have been linked to serious, even fatal internal bleeding. If you suffered a stroke, heart attack, or serious internal bleeding, or if a loved one died after taking Xarelto or Pradaxa, Call the Sentinel Group now. Our network of attorneys have years of experience fighting the big pharmaceutical companies and is ready to fight for you. Potential claims are being reviewed for users of Xarelto and Pradaxa who have suffered severe bleeding or hemorrhaging, stroke, or even death. 
Our network of experienced attorneys is ready to fight for you. You won't pay a thing until your case is settled. Call the Sentinel Group today. Please call 800-914-7822. That is 800-914-7822. 